all right welcome back to another video and again we are riding the same train of non-amd intel x86 cpus and i see you say there's amd right written right there what's on with that we'll get to that so uh this is a board i found on ebay off of a wise s90 or at least something on the xx0 line but i believe it's it's s90 because of the ram size and ram config so let's take a look at this board and see what the cpu we're dealing with and everything else uh, very embedded in nature um really old 2003 vintage has well vintage yeah for me it is um has a couple of very big inductors i don't know what they're doing um i've never really seen something that huge for inductor and an um embedded equipment um we have our main cpu which says it's an amd geode and i'll go into the history of why it's not an amd geode uh, we have 128 megabytes of sd ram it's all soldered in there's no um there's no way to change it upgrade it or whatever uh, we have a lan port a couple of usb ports a serial port a vga port and our barrel jack for power that takes 12 volts uh, we have our Realtek LAN chip, our via uh, USB chip, and I'm assuming um, our Realtek audio chip. We have a couple of USB controllers here. I have my keyboard and mouse plugged into that. And this little thing is the reason why I, I was very disappointed with this board. So this board has absolutely no way of expanding the storage or adding any other card or an IDE port, a CF card, an SD card slot. There's nothing on there. And what they do have for storage is this module and it's not a SATA DOM which I was hoping when I saw it it's a custom IDE DOM which uses a custom IDE connector and that's where I kind of started to be disappointed so there's the AMD Geo chipset right there um, so more on this DOM um, this is a very custom ID connector. I have not seen another DOM listed anywhere with the same connector apart from the ones that are already in these boards. And I've not seen DOMs of other greater capacity. And this is, hold your breath, only 64 megabytes in size. So even for 2001, that's really low. Like they could have added three more chips here to make it a uh, 256 and yeah um yeah but no it's it's a nan flash it's a nan flash to id controller and that's an id uh port that connects there so there's absolutely no way to install anything meaningful apart from dos on this it came preloaded with uh windows ce from the xp era or before around this time uh and i and i I, I couldn't extract the data from this um, because I had issues booting Linux. I had issues booting other things, um, which I'll go to in a bit more detail. Uh, but I did capture a video of Win98 SE running on it. So I'll just run that clip quickly.
So talking about booting other things on it, and we'll get to the CPU in a bit. And also why are all these scruff marks on the edges? Uh, I tried Linux and it would always, so the bias on it is very minimal. I don't think it's a full, um, it, it supports full ACPI if, even from, for that era or APM or anything like that. Um, it's a very minimal bias uh, and um, the chipset support may might not be there. So I boot Linux, it either hangs on Grub, it either hangs on ISO Linux. So anything pre-built was difficult. I did a few build root builds, they would even stuck at bootloader. So nothing even reached to the kernel. I'm sure the kernel itself made to boot would boot on this hardware. It's just the bootloaders don't support it for some weird reason i've seen this behavior on other non intel uh parts or old very old intel parts um like my vrc3 has similar issues with some grub uh bootloaders so and then i tried netbsd that boots but the ram is too slow or uh, too less to um boot into the installer i'm sure if i had pre-installed media but I don't have anywhere to connect that media to and USB boot is not what like I'm booting through like a DVD drive with discs um, over USB because regular USB does not boot things uh, properly. So um, so NetBSD didn't work. Apparently OpenBSD did work um, but like the space wasn't enough to install it um and i couldn't get like open bsd to copy or like dd from here to a usb drive for whatever reason um and yeah so it was not a good experience booting non-dos stuff on it uh but anyways getting back to the chip it does say amd geode and um the history is it was developed by uh national semi in 1999 uh, this is the Geode um, GX. So AMD Geode GX is actually National Semi GX2. And I think it got rebranded when AMD bought um, the, the Geode branch from National Semi, or the Geode, Bu Geode business from National Semi in 2003. But what you would notice here, if I shine the right light in the correct way, that it says 2001 um for the date so yeah so this is like maybe the silicon was already produced and it just wasn't out on the shelf so amd um decided to rebrand all of the geo parts that were going out in 2003 um even though they were diffused in 2001 as amd geo and i think that's what's happened here it's very similar to the amd zinc situation we are seeing right now and the eta situation that happened before so yeah, uh, the chipsets, uh, I'm, I'm not sure on the chipset history, maybe it was just like a pair that always went together, so similar situation, um, because the chipset says it's from 2002. Apart from that, yeah, nothing much. It, it works fine when it works, for the things it work. Um, I am hoping to get another more capable geode system, so I, we can load Linux and run some things on it. Uh, that way but what i can show you today apart from that win 95 um clip is it actually booting into dos so what i'm going to show you is uh, free dos 1.3 booting from the onboard dom um and or i don't remember if i told what dom means it means disk on module um and then we can see that working i have my uh, vga capture setups here i don't know if audio comes through i've never really tested audio on this i know lan works usb works serial works vga works and everything else works it's just <laughs> it doesn't work on the operating systems you like it to work um so yeah let's switch to the capture card and i'll power it on and let's see what happens all right here we are on the capture card I'll plug this in and the boot process is kind of weird because it needs to like do some pre-boot stuff and I'll you can hear the beep and there we go so now there's a problem JMMEX does not boot it has never booted for me um, so for some reason I uh, just wanted to show you that so if I turn that off 
wait for the yellow light to go away it has weird yellow light there beep and now we will move down and load without uh, load in safe mode without um that thing um so here we are i don't know why it's not like doing the um vga sync correctly but that's vga capture for you um so if you go into cpu start uh you can see here that it says geode by nsc and that's national semi and somewhere down here it says geode integrated processor by national semi so nowhere in the cpu start or um in 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 like the cpu id stuff does it ever say that it's made by amd it's just like the silk it's silk screen by amd because they bought the tech um so there were amd geodes that weren't the design that was made by national semi which was based on the older cyrex cpu design um but this is not it those are i think the athlon parts uh, that came out later uh, i think both gx and lx were as far as i remember based on the national semi core maybe modified a little bit uh I, there's not much to uh, demo i can do a mem start thing it does the same thing shows you a 128 megabytes free um i think and yep available 111 megabytes i don't know what the reserved and total are uh and then let's move on to i i guess it's doom so it's it's dos so let's play doom i don't have the proper doom installed on this one so i have the boom that comes with um the free dos installation so if you run this this actually works really well so i'm kind of happy that at least this bit works There you go. So like one of the issues is I, I can't because there's no native ID port on it or the one that I can access or um, anything else. I can't really have like an, a free DOS installation media. I can install stuff from the free DOS library onto this board. And also if I could, there's no place to put it. Like I can't, um, the, the 61 megabyte just get fills up, fills up really, really quick. So here's it that working and then um, I'll just switch back and I will actually be able to show um, why I, I don't have the heatsink here. Um, and the whole weirdness behind the heatsink design on this thing is absolutely maddening. All right, we are back to this thing and it's running. Like it's it's running that Doom demo and see it's greenlit here. Um, everything's in working condition. So if I touch the CPU, it's not hot. It never is hot. It's a one watt CPU. The whole thing just draws five watts in total from the bench power supply. The CPU, if I remember correctly, it's a 333 megahertz one. So it only draws around a watt or two at max. Uh, the, I think the package uh, draw maybe for the course is 0.9 watts or something around those lines from Wikipedia. But yeah, it's it's like warm to the touch, but it's not hot. Um, I've touched hotter CPUs that weren't heat sinked. So here's the heat sink it came with. It blocked right on top like that, and it was glued hard. It was a very resinish, but still with like fibrous res resin material, and I couldn't get it off. And the thing was, when this was on the CPU, it the, the heat sink would get really, really hot. So it was reaching higher temperatures when um, the heat sink was installed. And the reason is, um, and I'll put this image right here, is the thermal interface material was absolutely crap. If you notice, like that, that thing, that thick, bluish, resinish, fibrous thing is around 2 mm. Uh, one one to two mm in thickness so i'm assuming that instead of heat transfer it was actually uh, doing a lot of heat soaking and just sitting there without properly transferring it onto the heat sink so it was it would actually get much hotter 
than it would have gotten if it was just the CPU itself exposed to the air, uh, just the package itself. Now, because it was that difficult, um, it was on here, something like that. And I had to start and try and pry it open. And that's why you see all these uh, marks around the edges. And they are from the my screwdriver or any other thing because it's a very soft metal. Even if I you I was using plastic or something like that, it would um, kind of bend the metal. It's a very very light aluminum, um, and yeah. So it took me around one and a half hours of patiently uh, spraying isopropyl alcohol and just slightly prying and prying and prying and prying uh to get it off it was very painful but it was worth it i could show you guys the cpu that's in there um show you guys the packaging and yeah i think it was worth it so that's it um i'm hoping the um other so i'm trying to do this series of non intel amd x86 cpus i found a few on ebay uh, and i think it makes good content so uh, do subscribe. I have more on the way. I have another geode one that has uh, a lot more um, uh, Connectivity to it including IDE um, CF cards and uh, other things uh, So yeah, uh, let me know in the comments how you if you've ever used geode before because I know a lot of folks use them for PC engine stuff um, And I will see you all in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye